and the money from that event went to pay for repainting the lobby, which looks great now. Um, in addition to that, we have cleaned up, painted, and remodeled the downstairs just past the um, landing down there uh, for another downstairs lobby. And that looks wonderful. It really has changed the, the um, uh, view of all of that. We did some painting in the ladies' room and some enhancements there. And another big project was cleaning out and cleaning up and painting the downstairs office, um, as we have a couple of uh, new employees that are using that. The boardroom has been organized, all the books together, and, and it looks so much nicer, and that's been cleaned, as well as the downstairs bar area. There's a lot, there was a lot of stuff behind the bar, and that's all been cleaned out and organized, and um, a lot of work has been going on down there. In addition to that, last fall, uh, two fresh coats of sealer uh, was put on the ball room floor upstairs. So you can see that uh, lots of things have been going on even though um, we haven't been able to do any dancing. In addition to all of those things, we have three new employees. Uh, some of you may have um, encountered Emily. She is a bartender and is helping out Marina and doing some of her shifts. We also have hired Sandy and Julie for office and financial tasks. And we have rewritten the job descriptions to streamline what we're asking them to do. Um, and that's worked out really well. Um, we're getting much better efficiency from uh, what we've done there. So uh, our three new employees are a great asset to our team. Uh, we have also moved um, to using QuickBooks online rather than manually. And that makes for uh, easy record keeping. And also, it has been synced with our Square POS system. So any transactions, financial transactions, uh, do go right to our QuickBooks Online account. And that's moving along really well. We've also renegotiated a new building insurance policy, and we've saved some money on that. And they've been really good, too, about giving us some breaks because we've been shut down. And uh, I let them know that no revenue was coming in. And so they have been um, really cooperative with making that happen. Phase one of the window restoration project was completed this past spring. Um, that was probably about nine months to a year's worth of work there to redo the windows. Um, that is now done. We have the windows on the west side yet to do and uh, an application for more grant money from the Colorado State Historical Society uh, has been uh, sent in and we should hear by August 1st whether we will receive some more money for phase two of our window project. Uh, last year, for the first time, we participated in Colorado Gives Day, and that was very successful for us, and there's plans to do that again. That happens uh, the first part of December every year, uh, where lots of um, organizations and nonprofits uh, celebrate that day um, with hoping people will donate money for them to, to carry on. We also have an increased presence in our social media. Uh, we're now on Instagram and Twitter and certainly on Facebook to let people know what's going on in our building. The neighborhood approached the Denver Turnverine and asked if we would be willing to collaborate with them on a gardening project on the north side of our property between the sidewalk and the street along 16th. And they were willing to have volunteers and asked if they could do that along with the Turnverine volunteers to get rid of that old ugly asphalt and to put in some vegetation. And we've been working for about a year on that project. Um, if you haven't been by the Turnverine recently, you'll be surprised at what that looks like. It's just fantastic. We've planted three new trees 
and probably over 300 native plants in that area that are blooming and it looks just gorgeous. The money for that project was raised through grants. We wrote three different grants and um, received quite a bit of, of money for that, as well as our GoFundMe uh, account and money initially came through from that also. And finally, 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 our PPP forgivable loan came through at the end of last month after many weeks of trying to get the organization that was looking at our loan to give us the money and finally we did. So we do have money for the next couple of months to pay salaries and uh, utility bills. So we're thankful that that finally did happen. Those are the things that we have um, accomplished this past year. We had intended to do some things this spring, but because of the shutdown, that hasn't been possible. Um, the parking lot was something that we've been looking into to resurface. Um, that has not happened again because of the shutdown and we need to conserve our money um, because we don't know how long this is going to last. We have some repairs to do on the sidewalks, even though we don't own the sidewalks, we're responsible for them. And so there are some repairs there. Um, another project that I mentioned earlier is the second phase of the window restoration. Um, we are continuing to upgrade our financial system so it's more efficient and uh, easier to, to work with. Another project that we have talked about a number of times is how do we increase our membership and how do we increase attendance at dances when we're open? So that's an ongoing uh, thing too. And our 100 year old building uh, has lots of challenges and the maintenance and upkeep is an ongoing project uh, yesterday, today, and tomorrow. Uh, with 1920s vintage plumbing as only one example of some of the things that uh, we have to take into consideration. So current and future projects, the building is certainly a part of that um, all the time. I do want to take an opportunity to thank all of you who have volunteered your time and expertise to the Turnverein. Uh, so much happens behind the scenes in order for our dances to occur, our meetings, whatever is going on, events. Um, and there are a lot of people that have willingly given time and effort to help with um, making that happen. Examples are working the check-in desk, scheduling DJs and dance instructors, tech support, decorating, gardening, painting, cleaning, organizing, grant writing, social media promotions, just to name a few things. And I wanna thank all of you that have, have helped with doing that. And then I would also like to thank you those of you who have supported the Denver Turnverein, first of all, through your attendance at our events. Uh, it wouldn't be possible to keep our dances going without you being there. And also your donations and your memberships that uh, just make such a difference and it's how we are able to stay in business. So many thanks to those people who have helped in, in those capacities and additional ones. I just want to let you all know that I am choosing not to run for re-election this year. Uh, for the past six years, I've been serving on the board, and at times it certainly has been challenging, but very educational for me. Um, there have been some stressful times, but outweighing that is the fun that I've had with being a part of the board. Um, a lot's been a lot of hard work, but very rewarding. I feel a real sense of accomplishment and I want to thank you all for the experience and the opportunity to be a part of that. Right now I would like to introduce Richard Robbins. He is the treasurer of the Denver Turnverein and he would like to uh, give you information as far as where we are financially and what's happening with the Turnverein. So Richard, you're on. Thank you, Judy. Can you hear me? Yes. 
All right. Okay, I have a, my PowerPoint pitch. Uh, Art's gonna do some magic and bring it up for us. Uh, in general, this is fiscal year 2019's uh, end of year statements. Uh, I'm gonna present that in a condensed fashion. Just in general, 2019 actually was a, a very good year. Um, there were a lot of positives that were, were in it. Um, Judy covered the majority, if you can go ahead and go to slide two. Judy covered these big ticket items. We did uh, pay off the loan, so that's a, a major accomplishment for us. Uh, the window project, the foyer project, uh, downstairs paint seating area, garden, just to name a few of the big tickets. And on the, the money collection side, we did get Square completely implemented in the door of the bar and the office. And like Judy said, just recently have it hooked up to QuickBooks Online. So. Uh, we're well on our way to completely automating that whole process and uh, streamlining that for for efficiencies down the road. Uh, negatives, as you all know, um, shutting we got shut down with COVID-19 in March of 2020, and uh, reopening is to be determined uh, based on conditions, as Judy mentioned. So, uh, but a lot of a lot of positives. It was actually a very good year. Uh, Revenue-wise, um, this this is the budget plan. This is what we set in place at the beginning of the year in 2018 uh, for kind of our goals. Um, we did set a 5% increase in income over the 2018. That goal is 312,000 income. We were looking at increasing our charity events since we came a, became a 501c3 fundraisers and uh, and true and and having Fillmore parking events. In other words, when we are closed, uh, sell our parking lot to the Fillmore. Expenses, we were looking for a 1% decrease overall. That goal is 207,000. We're gonna do that through efficiencies. Um, we, we set aside some targets for some capital planning. We've already really talked about them. The, the window project was a grand total of like $94,000. 25% of that, uh, or 75% was grant, 25% was our responsibility. We had the makeover, the floor sealer, and kind of a stretch goal was the carpet, I mean it's carpet, the uh, parking lot. Uh, we thought that would come in around 10,000. That's going to be quite a bit more uh, after we got some estimates at the, this year, um, anywhere from 20 to $35,000. Uh, so that's, uh, that's in the plans. The parking lot certainly needs some attention, but uh, we'll be tackling that in the future. Next. So here are our numbers. Um, last year, we did uh, bring in 308 thousand one hundred and sixty nine dollars that's that last uh, column on the on the right hand side our target remember was 312 so we're pretty darn close uh, we did have good attendance we uh, had very good success with our fundraisers uh, our parking events and in and, and event incomes were good so uh, all positive there uh, negatives uh, we are slipping in membership so uh, please be uh, inclined to support our membership and to ask your friends to support our membership and we did have a little bit lower bar sales so um, just more positives than negatives though next slide please expenses wise we did have uh, quite a few expenses this past year um, two hundred and twenty six thousand dollars of expenses are our target was 207. We were a little above that, but we did have some big ticket items this year. Uh, we also had some, like Judy was saying, a hundred year old building. We had some AC repairs, some boiler repairs, and, and our foiler makeover came over quite a bit less. But overall, that was uh, really good and well within, a, well, well within targets. Next. So net income. Um, this is the first year in my tenure that we actually had a negative net income. We were down $11,000 on the year, but that was primarily due to the one-time uh, cost of the window projects. We dipped into our uh, rainy day fund to pay that off. And, you know, and uh, so um, in all in all, we were up 80 some thousand dollars, but when you put the $90,000 in expense in it, uh, we came up minus 11. Um, 
uh, all in all, that's that's very good for a very expensive project that we uh, accomplished over the last uh, nine months, as Judy said. Next. Um, we all, we've talked about this a couple of times now. Um, our, our building mortgage for all intensive purposes, you can see over the years, the, that chart starts at 2014, I think. Yeah, 2014. And um, we've uh, slowly brought that down in this last year. We, um, the penalties for paying it off early disappeared. So we made the choice, the board voted, and we paid that off in full. So very good, uh, very timely to help us out too. The cash balance rainy day fund. Uh, this is another thing that we were very proud of over our years with the board. Uh, you can see it started off just a little over ten thousand uh, dollars. We brought it up to a max of like a hundred and forty at one time. Uh, this last year we paid off. Uh, we used that money to to support the window project, but we still are are over a hundred thousand dollars. So. Uh, very good uh, rainy day fund. I never expected to use the rainy day fund for COVID-19 um, pandemic. Um, always was thinking that would be something like a roof or uh, the parking lot or some of the other big ticket items that we, air conditioning system, that, that's a $30,000 expense when that, when that comes, when that'll be due. But uh, but we are using it uh, to help support us and get through. And with $100,000, uh, we're very in very good shape uh, to, to stay solvent. So um, next year's budget goals, to just to throw them out there, um, try to meet this year's targets, which was 308 expenses revenue. Uh, expenses wise meet uh, 2019 226 those are going to be pretty aggressive goals especially the longer the uh, closure stretches out um, capital funding uh, Judy talked about it the uh, phase two window project uh, that'll also be supported with a grant if we can get it um, potentially another floor reseal is best to keep our floor in great shape and then the parking lot is a stretch goal again so the bottom line um, is that uh, we we did 2019 was a was really a good year. A lot of good accomplishments were were made. Um, we have the building paid off. We have a large rainy day fund, and uh, we're puts us in a good position to to ride out the pandemic. Um, I do ask you uh, please support memberships. Don't you let your memberships lack. That uh, really does keep us solvent. And uh, when we do get open back up please attend. And with that, that's it. Thank you. Um, thank you, Richard. Uh, I think Judy's going to ask for questions to be uh, put into the chat window and we'll address them at the end. I am. That's exactly right. Um, Art asked to have a few minutes to talk about the technology. So Art, would you do that now? Okay, I had muted myself. Um, we've got uh, Wayne Hall. A lot of you probably know him. He's a longtime dancer and member. Wayne has um, volunteered to help with the technology. Um, up till this point, uh, most of it was uh, myself and Richard had done a lot with Square. But uh, that is moving along and Wayne's been a very good uh, help on that. The um, Last summer, I applied for a Microsoft grant. Um, up till that time, our software that we use, we're paying annual subscription fee for and whatever. Well, Microsoft has granted us uh, up to 25 free licenses for Office 365 um, and um, other things that we can do like the Windows 10 upgrade. So, um, you know, we're, reducing costs in that area area a little bit. Um, other than that, you know, and the fact that Wayne stepped up and helped me get the YouTube channel um, started and all of this, and by the way, that was uh, William Murakami's suggestion to put the videos out on YouTube, which we really thought was a good idea. Um, and this meeting will be 
out on YouTube. So if somebody missed the meeting, they can go and look at the meeting out on YouTube. And I think that pretty well wraps up um, what we're doing in the technology area. Okay, thank you. Um, Kirsty, uh, would you talk a little bit about the social media aspect? Yes, I will. For those that don't know me, my name is Kirsty, and I've been on the board now for two years as a social media and marketing person. Um, in the past two years, we've join if you're not already. Uh, we've worked with a lot of um, organizations and publications around Denver, including um, Life on Capitol Hill, The Know, which is provided by the Denver Post, and also Denver Arts Week, which is a yearly event. Uh, we continue to have various art shows displaying our talented dancers' work, and we hope to have more of those. We've worked on various marketing campaigns for silent auctions and fundraising events, and we look forward to expanding those to our other clubs and community. Thank you to those who recently took the survey regarding reopening the turn. We appreciate your feedback and we're working on a plan for everyone to return safely. We will have additional surveys in the future because we want to make sure we understand our members and provide more engagement opportunities with our community and across the clubs. And then next year, we're gonna be celebrating the 100 year birthday of the building. So we're gonna be looking for some volunteers to help with various social events around that. And if you're interested or have ideas, feel free to contact us via our website email. And um, don't forget, if you're a big social media person, to hashtag the Denver Turn Grind so we can see all your wonderful photos of you guys dancing at home. Thanks so much. Thank you, Kirsty. Um, it looks to me like we have 39 participants. That's what's showing on my uh, computer screen right now. Uh, so our quorum was 25, so we have uh, officially reached our quorum numbers and uh, voting can take place. On YouTube, and you received the, the link to get to the YouTube, are uh, videos of the four people who are running for board positions. There are four positions open and we have four candidates. Um, Kimberly Conley, William Mirakami, Jim Pike, and Steve Eschenbaugh. And they have all made videos to introduce themselves to you and uh, to talk about uh, why they would like to be on the board and what they have to contribute. What we're asking you to do in terms of voting is to use your personal email and send an email to membership at denverturnbrine.com saying which of the four candidates you would like to see on the board. And you can vote for up to four candidates. Um, so as soon as the meeting is over, if you would please uh, take a minute sometime between now and noon tomorrow, you have 24 hours to do your voting and take a minute to view on YouTube the candidates' videos and then to send in your vote for whom you would like to see on the board. In addition to voting for the board candidates, we'd also like you to vote on whether to accept the minutes from our 2019 annual report. Um, those minutes were sent out via email and I uh, hope you had the opportunity to read those. So would you just say yes to accepting the minutes or no, here's what I remember from what was said. So now two things as far as what needs to happen for voting for the candidates and then also voting whether to accept the minutes from our 2019 annual meeting or not. And then the third thing, um, we would like to open up um, our chat for a few minutes 
uh, for any questions or comments. And the other option, if you don't want to use the chat on Zoom, is on your email that you are sending to membership at denverturnverein.com. Uh, include any questions or suggestions or comments on those emails, and uh, we can um, answer those uh, from by emailing you back personally. So three things to do on your email um, to vote for board candidates, to approve the minutes or not, and also if you have questions or suggestions or want to make comments, you can put those on your email also. But at this point in time, um, I'd like to open it up to any questions that anybody has. I think on chat, they uh, come through. Everybody can see the questions. So um, if you would like to do that at this point, let's, let's see what it says. Um, OK, John R has raised his hand and um, I guess wants to speak. I'm going to ask him to unmute. I can't unmute anyone without their permission. So John, if you see something come across and you wanna say something, you can unmute. So John, you're live. John, we can't hear your audio. You could type into the chat window if you know how to do a chat and you could send your question via chat. You can't hear him at all, Art? No. But John's microphone does show unmuted at this point. Um, there is one question while we're waiting for John to come up. Is it OK to answer? Um, yes. What needs to happen before the turn might reopen? Um, at the beginning, we talked about um, that the um, social distancing restrictions are still in place. Uh, people need to be six feet apart. There's also the mandatory mask. Um, and also with dancing, we're, we would be in an enclosed area. And for right now, it seems like with the number of coronavirus cases increasing, that now is not a good time to open back up. We do plan to monitor the situation as we go through uh, the next couple months and see, uh, and we would love to open up as, just as soon as possible because we're all anxious to get back uh, to, to dancing. But at this point in time, we have no specific date. It's kind of a, we have to wait and see what's going to happen and how things progress. Are there any other questions from anyone that would like to send something through on chat? <laughs> okay, good morning. Looks nice to see something coming in. Um, Do you want me to read it? No, it's, it's showing up just fine. Um, air purifiers for the building. Um, that's certainly a, a strong possibility and a good suggestion. Um, all of our windows do open um, on the main floor there, the main dance floor. And we certainly have fans. So it's not like we can't keep air moving. Uh, cost would be something that would have to be considered uh, if we want to keep the building open, we have to prioritize what we would want to spend our money on, particularly at this time when we have no revenue coming in. 
but um, certainly air purifiers would be a, a good suggestion to help reduce that uh, to do. Um, okay. So I would like to mention that um, after the meeting concludes, I will process the video and upload it to the YouTube channel. So if any of you have friends that missed the meeting, or you wanna go back and look at Richard's report, or uh, just watch it again, um, it'll be up there within the hour, probably take 30 minutes to, to an hour to get it up there. Um, and you know, please share that information um, with people. Hi, this is Kirsty jumping in again. I just want to make sure I give the right information um, for voting. It's membership at denverturnrhyme.org. I think I did put in there. Dot com. com. So make dot sure com. it's dot com. Dot com. <laughs> okay, a couple of people pointed that out. So yes, mm -hmm. thank you. Dot com, not org. Okay, thank you. Um, a question has come up about um, other clubs continuing. Uh, we did have a meeting um, with the club presidents and all of them seem to indicate that yes, they do want to return to the Turnverein. It is totally up to them when they feel comfortable returning. Um, so it's, it's kind of a wait and see kind of thing, but they, they like being at the Turnverein. It's a good place to dance. People are used to coming to the Turnverein. Uh, to do their dancing, and so um, I think that's a, a strong possibility that we would see all the clubs returning there. Um, okay, you have the names there. Any other comments or questions anybody would like to put through on the chat? Um, Linux versus Windows, that would be uh, something that the, the tech people would need to consider. Um, and uh, that would be probably Wayne and Art and some of the other board members. Right now, we're, we're pretty well set on Windows. Everybody's using that and it seems to be working for us as we've done some upgrading over the, the years with that. Uh, question came up. So we can vote for all four, and yes, you can vote for all four. Um, okay, all so four I, candidates. I will answer the um, Linux question. Wayne and I um, are both Windows type people. Um, it is uh, more challenging to find someone who supports Linux, but more importantly is we now have 25 licenses for Windows and Office 365. And we also run our membership database on Microsoft Access. So at this point in time, uh, while Linux would be a good alternative because it's a solid operating system and it is free, there really isn't any incentive for us to go to Linux. Um, another question has come up about restricted dances with one partner um, all evening, and the idea is still out there. Um, we've talked about doing some line dancing, having um, uh, technic, um, technique uh, lessons as a possibility, having a bring your own partner to a dance. Um, but again, with the, with the six foot uh, social distancing restriction and with the number of cases increasing in Colorado we want to be very careful about when we open up and I know everybody's anxious to do that uh, so uh, again it's a wait and see kind of thing this is Joyce and I have a question about the election if there are four candidates and four positions open do we not just elect them by yeah, 
I've forgotten the term, <laughs> by con uh, consensus or uh, acclamation, I guess. Um, what needs to happen is that I need to check that the people who have voted are indeed active members. So I need to have the ballots. Thank you. <laughs> Anything else anyone wants to say or ask? And again, you have the opportunity to send any comments or questions um, in your email ballot. Um, we will get back to you about those and also to uh, answer any questions that you uh, have on that. Anything else? I want to thank you all for being at the meeting today. Uh, <laughs> this was quite an endeavor to, to get through and um, it has worked well and thank you for your patience. Um, I look forward to, just like you do, the day when we can all get back to doing what we love, that is dancing. And in the meantime, I hope you will be healthy, happy, and hopeful. Thank you for being at the meeting today. Don't forget to vote membership at denverturnverein.com and have a wonderful rest of your day. The meeting is adjourned. <laughs>